Welcome to Cleve Stack and another video on focus for stable diffusion. In this video, I'm going to be going over some more tips for consistent character creation that I've been playing around with. This continues with some of the ideas from my previous two videos that I posted on this subject. I'm also going to give a couple other tips that I'd like to pass along as well that I've come across. So why don't we just jump right into that now? So as we can see here, I've got some consistent creation going on with characters, and I'm going to show you how to get to what I'm doing here. Okay, so for the initial setup here, um, actually one tip I will give, if you ever find that focus is hesitating, doesn't wanna start, a lot of times this happens whenever you're uh, upscaling. Um, you'll find this with impainting, sometimes it needs to upscale the image. And if you go to your command window and look in there, okay, so sometimes what'll happen is you're gonna get to a point, if you're watching the command window, it's going to get right into here, this section here about upscaling. And this can happen when you're in painting, just upscaling, vary, things like that. I found when I have that happen sometimes on my computer, especially when I have a lot of things running, it gets stuck and it can take a while. But I did discover if I just minimize every all my browser windows, including the focus window, usually it'll kick in within 10 to 15 seconds, it'll start uh, upscaling at that point. And then I can maximize my window again and continue where I left off. So that's one of my tips that I've come across. On to my ideas for the accomplishing what I have here. So this, I'm gonna use the speed settings initially. A lot of this, I'm actually not gonna go through every single step. I'll show you what I did. I've already created some of these things. I don't wanna make you sit here and watch me create them. So I would put this on the speed setting for now, depending on what you're looking for for poses. This is to get the poses that you want. Um, as you can see in this grid, we got four different poses. Like I did here with comic characters, but if you're doing something like that, you may be able to get away with even more poses with upscaling and splitting them. But I'm not gonna jump into all that right now. I'm just gonna show you how I did it with these four. I don't need the image prompt or anything. So style. I'm gonna uncheck all of these and I just want the line art. I'm gonna leave the model as the juggernaut, which is the standard. I'm not gonna change anything in there. I'll go ahead and start making the models that I wanna use. Now, what I have found is to do this is you just want very basic structure for the image prompt to follow. So just like I did in my last video with the headshots, I can generate using uh, basically a 3D mesh character, a human form, male standing, white background. Alter that as you see fit. For this purpose though, we just want the basic pose. I don't want any extra stuff that's attached or any clothing to show or anything like that because that'll influence the final image. So you may have to generate several different ones to get the results that you want. Okay, so for the purpose of my demonstration, this gives you an idea you'll be generating different images. I prefer the ones that are just very simple and basic. Sometimes we'll put clothing on them or things like that. Um, but that's usually I find can influence the final image. So I find it's best to try to get the most basic ones that you can get. Then you come up with multiple different poses that you're looking for. So I would say I, I took multiple different ones, pasted them together. I use myself, I use GIMP for that. I find bringing one in and expanding the canvas, I can just drop the other ones in and then I can get four different ones. The benefit of that is I'm keeping the same aspect ratio because that's one thing that you wanna do is stick with certain aspect ratios. If you start mixing and matching them, you're gonna start getting some odd results. Now, once I've done that in here, I'll go under the image prompt. I'm gonna bring that one in because these are all rough ones. The models are slightly different. So I find that I just wanna use that as a reference. I'll go ahead and drop that in, and then I'm gonna tell it here, we'll drop this one as just as an image prompt as a reference. So it'll know what I want it to look like. And then I'm gonna do a grid of four different poses, 3D mesh character, human form. And I've got my the same aspect ratio, whatever that was, because these, yes, this image is twice as large, but it's still the same aspect ratio. So I can I can use that to influence my final. And this, I, as I said, is just on the image prompt. Now you may need to adjust these weights to get what you're looking for. Still keep this on speed. 
the style is still line art because I'm still generating the same one. You could just use that original one that I've used, but the proportions are gonna be different. I find by regenerating another full grid based upon that, it does much better at getting those proportions the same for each model. So when you go to generate the actual character, those will come out much better. Okay, now, once you get the results that you want, like I said, you're looking for more just the consistency between each model, as long as that's sticking with what you want. I'm gonna go with this last one, just, just for what we're doing at this point. Now I can remove the image prompt here and I'll bring this one down here. So that's now gonna be my reference that I'm gonna be using. Now I'm gonna drop this down a bit and these you'll have to adjust to get the re results that you want. Now at this point, I'm gonna change it from line art because I'm not, I've got my poses, I've got what I'm looking for. Now I wanna go with my final and I'm gonna do a comic character basically for this one. You could do that, you can do this with uh, photo quality stuff, but it's gonna be a little harder because you're gonna to have to do a lot of upscaling, face swapping, things like that. And you may lose some consistency between those. I find especially for these sorts of images, comics or anything else like that, you can usually get much better results. The other thing to keep in mind is when you're creating these things, is simplicity is your friend. If you make an outfit that is very complex or anything like that, it's gonna be a lot harder for you to get more the more consistent results as you upscale and everything else. So simplicity is usually what I find to be the best when it comes to this. I went ahead, this is gonna be my poses. Now, I can at this point also use a face if I wanted to, although I'll usually use that again later to improve the detail. So I went ahead and I generated this earlier. So this is actually going to be the face swap that I'm going to use. So that'll be the face that we're going to use on this character. And I could also put in, if I wanted to, the clothing to influence it, things like that. So, but I'm not going to do that for this one. I'm just going to create, uh, let's see here. Let's go with, so a man in a blue suit. And if we wanted to and black tie and different poses, full body, white background. And that pretty much is all I need for this. I can touch some things up afterwards. So let's say we have, at this point, I'm gonna increase the quality. Although since I'm doing this for the, under the comic settings, I find a lot of times you can, you don't necessarily need the quality setting, um, but I'm gonna use it for this one. Everything else, I've unchecked everything else because you do not want to use these other styles because as I've mentioned before, that they'll fight the influence of the comic book style. So we're not going to use those. And everything else I've left as is for now. We have our face swap in here. We have our poses that we want to set up. So I'm going to go ahead and generate that. As we can see here, we have one that's actually, it looks like it's going to be the wrong color suit. So I'm just gonna go ahead and skip that because this will not every time get everything perfect. Sometimes you're gonna have to do multiple tries, uh, but I find usually what happens is it will get consistently the same character, same clothing in every single one. Sometimes it might be slightly off, which you can fix with in-painting if you want. This usually works pretty well in my experience. I have done it, like I said, with the photo models, the styles and stuff, and it works but you're gonna have a much harder time when it comes to the face and hands. And then you have to do a lot of in-painting to improve those. And as you upscale the images, if the details of the clothing and everything are more intricate, you can start to lose some of those details as you improve them, or, you know, as you increase the resolution, and then your consistency will start to fall apart. So like I said, this seems to work much better, I find for things like comics, 3D characters, things like that. The photorealism, it's, it's gonna be a little bit more work to get that consistency. It can work. I, I, I played around with it and it does a pretty decent job. It's just not as easy to do as I'm showing here. Okay, so we have our sets of images here. Um, they're all pretty consistent here. Actually, this one picked up what I was going for with this one. This is holding a cell phone and talking on a phone. 
so I won't have to edit that one. I had to do that earlier. I had to change it using in painting. And this one, it added some, you know, a briefcase. So I'm going to actually use that last one. Now, at this point, what I would not do is I'd find the image that I want and I can open it. How you do this is up to you. I use paint for this only because I find it to be easier. And then I can go ahead and pick the one that I want to improve upon. So let's say. Okay, so we have our two. I go through, I do all four of those or however many images you had. I've now split it into four. So the resolution is actually lower. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead, I'll get rid of this. I'm gonna leave the face swap in here. Now I'm gonna upscale at this point. Now this is the part that sometimes can take a few tries because you have multiple ways of doing this. I prefer to use the upscale 2X. Um, it does change the image a little bit, but I found the quality is better than just doing a standard upscale. The up, standard upscale, the fast 2X will just upscale it, but you're not gonna get more details or anything. So I'm gonna leave this on the same style. We're gonna leave it on the same resolution. That's fine. Oh, the other thing I wanna do, I find that works pretty well, is if you go into the Describe tab here, and then you drop your image in here, we're gonna switch this over to Art Anime, describe this into one prompt. I find it, I can drop this in, it'll describe the prompt. I can make sure everything looks fine in here. Now I'm gonna go up back, upscale. I also wanna use the face swap. You could do this later with in painting and that sort of thing. That's up to you. I probably still will, but I find through this step, this process, it works pretty well to keep using the face swap. But in order to do that, to use it for the upscale and variation, you do need to go in your advanced tab, developer debug under control settings and mix image prompt and very upscale. So now when we generate this, it'll upscale it and use that face that we have set in the face swap. Okay, so I'm actually gonna stop it right there. I've got the variation upscale that I want. It actually looks, if I look at these, everything's pretty consistent with the original one. So I will go ahead and use that one at that this point. So I can uncheck that and we'll go back into the image. I could bring it into the in painting and I could fix anything that I wanted to at this point. Um, if the face wasn't exactly what I was looking for, I could use the, the uh, face swap. So let's go ahead and do that. So I've gone ahead, I got the face swap set. That'll work for our purposes. I'm gonna set that pretty high. Now I'm gonna go into our in paint and I will. There's a couple different options here. We can go in, we do have to go into the developer debug. We have to check off mix in paint or image prompt and in paint. Now there's two options here. We can do this. Um, if you're gonna use the just regular in painting like I have chosen here, I haven't changed it down below. You do need to go in and increase the forest overwrite refiner switch up to 50 or so, because once it switches the refiner and the regular in painting, it will lose that lightness. So you want to increase that higher. I find in most cases, though, I don't even do that. I just leave it as normal. I go down here. I improve detail, detailed man's face, and then I'll go ahead and I'm just going to generate again. Okay, so we have our finished product on this one. So I'm gonna actually go ahead and just do the other one as well. Let's, um, I'm not gonna go through every single one. This is just to demonstrate how this works. Obviously you wanna wait till you get the, get the image that you prefer. Um, but once you've got that image that you prefer, then I go ahead and do the same thing I did before. If I'm not satisfied with this face, I get put the face swap in there and i'm gonna go ahead and mask that as well now this one i'm actually gonna change a little bit i'm gonna paint off the hand and i'm going to set it for impromp now in here since i'm gonna do the regular in paint i'm gonna change the refiner switch i'm gonna set that up to a higher amount and i'm gonna uncheck that we'll do the 
Well, let's put in talking on cell phone. Add that to the prompt. And now we're just gonna go ahead and generate. We do have, like I said, we've set everything, the in-paint, so it's mixed. Our face swap is set. So let's go ahead and generate that. That last one looks pretty good. So at this point, if I wasn't satisfied with the face, I could just go ahead, just do the face now, the way I did it before. And what I'll do in here. Now, the only thing we need to do with this is, okay, I've already left that overwritten. So we're gonna turn that down. Now we're gonna go to just the, uh, the face like we did before. So let me pull up what we have just to get an idea of the results. And I really didn't spend much time on these. I, you, you know, you could get much better results with a little more work, but that should give you a pretty good idea of some of my concepts that I've come up with. You can combine this with the heads, with the, with the whole body, a whole bunch of different combinations. I'm gonna continue keep playing with some of these ideas and just keep coming up with some more options on what you're looking for. Obviously, this isn't gonna do well if you need a whole bunch of different images, but it's really good for if you only need a few images of the same character in different poses. It's one way of getting to that point. Okay, well, I think that sums up what I wanted to cover today. Hopefully a lot of that made sense. And hopefully this video will give you some more tools to create consistent characters. If you found this video helpful, please consider hitting the like button because it does help. Don't forget to check out my other videos on Focus as well. Any questions or tips on getting better results, please leave them in the comments. And have a great day.